chapter 5, beginning at verse 13, if we'll stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. I'm going to talk to us tonight on the topic of run for the hills. Run for the hills. Beginning at verse 13, the word of the Lord reads, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. Would you bow with me? Master, we love you today. We thank you, Jesus, for every single week, every opportunity we have to come into the house of God Lord, we're so grateful for your word, for in this word is life. If your word is quickened by the Spirit, there's life, God. But if your word is, is merely dictating law, then it's death. And we pray today, God, that your anointing and your presence would rest upon your servant, that life might be drawn out from your word. Help us, God, to understand and to know every word, every point, of the message that you've given us this hour to deliver. Help those that hear this message by tape, those that are here personally. Lord, help each and every one, God, to receive benefit from this message, as simple as it may be, for we ask it in Jesus' precious, wonderful, holy name. Amen. Praise God and amen. You may be seated. Praise God. You know, the Lord in Matthew chapter 5, the Lord made a very important point. He started out in verse 13 by saying, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? What was the Lord saying? The Lord was saying, You serve a very important function in the world. Do you hear me today? The church serves a very important function in the world. And when the church stop functioning according to the way that God has mandated for it to function, when the church stops doing what God has wanted His church to do, when the church stops operating the way that God wants it to operate, it is now good for nothing except to be thrown away. And the problem is today, there are many out there who are preaching that they're the salt of the earth, but what they're not realizing is that they have lost their savor. And they're no longer good for anything. And you might as well just throw them out, throw them in the trash, because they're not doing what God put the church here to do. Salt serves many important functions. One function that salt serves is it can take something that is not so savory and make it savory. Amen. It can take something that isn't so good and isn't so delicious and make it at least palatable. Amen. I want you to know, when the church is acting right, we're able to help people go through things in their life that otherwise aren't so good. They're kind of bitter. They're kind of detestable. But praise God, when the church is doing its job, we can help folks to be able to swallow the difficult things that life hands them. That's when the church is doing its job. We can help people to find pleasure even in less than pleasurable experiences and circumstances. But you know, that's not just all salt does. Salt is also a preservative. You see, in the Lord's day, and for many, many centuries thereafter, it was common for fishermen on boats to use large quantities of salt to place the freshly caught fish in. And they could transport that fish and that fish could stay on that boat for weeks. And it would be just as fresh when it arrived at the shore as it was when they caught it. It would not have brought it away. The, the flesh would not have given away to decay. 
And the reason for that is the salt. Because salt acts as a preservative. And I want you to know, the Bible tells us that if it were not for the presence of God's people in the earth, the earth would self-destruct. It would utterly eat itself up and destroy itself. Because the wickedness of man would reign and man would turn around and blow himself to pieces. But we're the preservative. We're the one ingredient that brings a little bit of sanity to an otherwise insane world. We're the only ingredient that helps to bring a little bit of calm to a tumultuous society. We're the ingredient that helps to bring a little bit of love to a hateful generation. Amen. Because we are the preservative. We make things more savory, that may be difficult to swallow, and we also preserve. But that's not the full point of my message today. But you see, the Lord said, first, you know, you are the salt of the earth, and then he goes on to say, but if you're not acting like salt, if you're not doing what salt is supposed to do, then it is good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. And then immediately thereafter, he begins the statement, You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. How, how, how are we to be the salt of the world? It's easy. When you understand that we are the light of the world, when you act like the light of the world, you will be being the salt of the earth. Do you understand me? The Lord said immediately, you are the light of the world. You want to know how the salt can retain its savoriness? If the church will understand that you are the light of the world, a city which is set on a hill cannot be hid. He goes on to say, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Lord, what are you trying to tell us? The Lord is trying to tell us today, children, that God's church and God's people ought always to be seeking higher ground. God's church and God's people ought always to be operating in a manner that is different than the world. Amen. You've heard the old phrase that people will use sometimes. Well, she tried to take the high road, so she decided, or he decided to take the high road, which implied that they were doing the thing that would seem morally and spiritually better. They didn't do the nasty thing that would have seemed, you know, in our flesh, that would have seemed like it was justifiable. No, they took the high road. They did what seemed morally and spiritually better. Well, you know, that's what God's church is all about today. He said, you know what, you want to be the kind of church that I've called you to be. You want to be the salt of the earth? Well, let me tell you how to do that. You need to occupy higher ground. You need to run for the hills. You always need to be on a higher plane than the world is operating. You can't operate on the same plane as they do. You've got to operate on a higher plane. Amen. You've got to get to a higher position than they are. Because if you try to get down where they're at and operate in the way that they're operating, you're going to wind up in the same place as they are. You know, you get mad enough at somebody because they've wronged you and you decide you're going to go blow up their car or you're going to go shoot them in the leg or do something foolish, honey, you'll wind up in jail just like anybody else. But God has called us to be the light of the world and he said, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. He said, if you're going to function at all as a light in the world, you have got to be set up in a high place. You've got to be doing things differently than the world does them. One of the things that irks me is when the church and the world are in full agreement on something. Because that tells me that the church and the world, in that issue anyway, are walking on the same highway. They're walking on the same path. 
And isn't it interesting today that one of the areas where the world and the church seem to be not only smooching in the back seat of a car at Lover's Lane somewhere, but they seem to be having an all-out affair is the issue of gay lesbian people. Well, boy, I'll tell you what, you can get the worst demonic, ungodly, evil devil out there to condemn gay-lesbian relationships and the gay-lesbian so-called lifestyle. And right beside him will be Jerry Falwell, the pillar of righteousness, hallelujah, praise God. Mr. Falwell, I've got news for you. The fact that your position and the position of the world align themselves perfectly together, the fact that that is true is evidence that you are not where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to have a higher mind. You're supposed to have a more spiritual understanding. You're supposed to have a better way of looking at things and understanding things than the world does because you're supposed to have the mind of Christ. And I've got news for you for half of your news conferences. 98% of the crap you talk would never have come out of the mouth of Jesus. It's one thing to use a term from Scripture to speak and illustrate a marvelous truth. It's another thing to misuse the term and make it to take on a meaning very different than God himself had intended. One of the terms that the Pentecostal movement has so miserably abused and misused and misinterpreted is the term standard. For the Word of God declares in Isaiah 59, 19, so, they shall, uh, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. I've heard more churches, when they're trying to let people know that they're supposed to wear their sleeves a certain length and their hair a certain height and their dresses a certain uh, length, get into that scripture. When the enemy comes against you like a flood, God will raise up a standard, and they'll let you know that the standards are there to keep the enemy at bay. But I've got news for you, my friend. First of all, it is God himself who raises a standard, hallelujah, not the people. And he raises that standard in response to an enemy attack that might otherwise overwhelm us said, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard. The Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard. You're not going to lift up a standard. The Spirit of the Lord is going to lift up a standard. And what does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means he's going to cross the ground you're walking on to rise underneath your feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So as the flood waters rise, you're walking one step higher. Hallelujah to God. Whoa, glory. People say, Jesus walked on the water. I don't know that he did. It's possible that the ground underneath the water came up to me in. Hallelujah. Galatians 6, 1 and 2 tells us how the church is different than the world, how we are the light of the world, how we do things at a higher level than the world does it. Declaring to us, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. I want you to know, <laughs> most societies in the world today, if you've got somebody in the workforce who's weak and they're not pulling their load, what do you do? You cut them loose. Amen. 
you got somebody in the armed forces and they're injured and they're not able to, to do their job. They're not able to do what they're supposed to do. What do you do? Cut them loose. You've got a directive. You've got a job to do. You keep going. And you just let them lay till they die or till the enemy comes and finishes them off. How many times have we heard the old saying, the Church of Jesus Christ is the only organization on planet Earth that shoots its own wounded? Amen. We get some in our number who are overtaken. Hey, did you hear what that verse said? It said overtaken in a fault. Do you know what that means? It doesn't mean they have a weakness. It means they have a weakness that they have completely caved into and they've been overcome by it. And what is the church's response? <laughs> what does God want the light of the world, the salt of the earth? How does he want us to respond? The way the world would know. He said, no, uh -uh. if somebody in our number is overtaken in a fault, he said, then they which are spiritual, restore such a one. I don't care how you do it. <laughs> I don't care what you do, but bless God, you find a way to restore them. Hallelujah. You do what you got to do until they're back with them alone in the house of God and in the fellowship of his son. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus, have mercy on my soul. You see, God's church walks and the ground constantly ever is rising in front of it. Every step we take without our having to climb a step, we're already headed upward. We're already moving higher and higher. Every day we are reaching closer and closer to our eternal destination because God causes the ground beneath our feet to rise with us upon it. Hallelujah. How does God respond over to one who is overtaken in a fault? He calls the spiritual among us to move in and minister restoration and healing. That's God's standard. Not how high your hair is. Not how long your face is. That's God's standard right there. That's His response to circumstances and situations which might otherwise overwhelm and destroy. Psalm 37, 23 through 25. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, and he, the Lord, delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that great news? But listen to what David said. I have been young, I have been young, and now I'm old. A lot of us know how that feels to say that. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Hallelujah. David is telling us the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to know, honey, if you'll walk where God is pointing, that each and every step you take, you'll be one step higher. Your altitude will have climbed, glory to God. And no matter how high the tide, no matter how high the rising waters of sin in this world, God will raise up a standard, hallelujah, against the enemy. And as that standard is raised, your altitude will raise, and you will always be above the torments of the enemy. The Lord himself will cause the way upon which we walk to rise before us as the enemy's floodwaters rise around us so that our feet remain upon dry ground and we are prevented from slipping and falling or worse yet, drowning on our way. When the church is being all that God has called us to be, we will become sought after and not ridiculed. The reason so many people look at the church today with such dislike and hatred and anger is because of the judgmental, critical, ungodly spirits that are preaching from our pulpits. And when the church starts acting the way the church is supposed to act, I've got news for you. People will seek out to become part of the church. 
people will want to be part of Christianity when the Christian church preaches this message like Jesus preached it. Brother Mara, I don't believe that. Listen to this, Isaiah 62, 10 through 12. Go through, go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway. Gather out the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called sought out. A city not forsaken. You see, Mom, when we, when the church builds its city on the hill like it's supposed to, when we choose higher ground, when we choose a more spiritual way of looking at things and acting about things and responding to things like God has called us to, I've got news for you. That's going to be one city that people are going to look for. That's going to be one city that people will make the effort to get to. Because they're going to know their safety. They're going to know that there's help for them there. They're not going to find judgment. They're not going to find condemnation. They're not going to find ridicule. But instead, they're going to find salvation. They're going to find deliverance. And they're going to find healing. Run for the hills. That's where we need to be building our church tonight, is up on the mountaintop. On higher ground, praise God, amen. And, Lord, tonight my prayer is this. Let every step I take in my walk with you be one step higher. Amen. Every step I take, let it be one step higher. Let the, the ground beneath my feet rise with every step I take to keep me yet another inch or two or a foot or two, whatever it takes, to keep me above the torments of sin and unbelief, Lord, just allow the ground beneath my feet to rise beneath me and keep me on higher ground, because I don't ever want to be on the same level as the world. I don't ever want to look at people the same way the world looks at people. There was a time when the church and the world were in perfect agreement on black folks. They were subhuman. They could be sold as slaves. They could be treated miserably and foully because they were not human. Their skin color made them different. And you know what? The Southern Baptist Church agreed with that 100%. 100%. And a lot of good Southern Baptist boys got in the fight during the Civil War to defend that belief. So you see what happens when the church and the world are on the same level? All hell going to bust out loose. But honey, let me tell you, when Satan is coming at us like a flood, God is going to raise the standard. And the ground beneath our feet is going to rise so that we're above the flood. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting? Amen. I told you it was a simple message tonight, and that's all I had. That's it. You just got all of it. Amen. But I just think, uh, I think it's an exciting thought. Every time when, I, when the Lord gave me this message, I thought about it. I said, Lord, we, we like to watch these sci-fi movies, you know, and we like to watch all this stuff. And we always kind of have a preconceived notion of how certain things are going to be done, even if we're trying to, if we're trying to, to guess what the supernatural is going to do. In other words, you know, uh, Harry Potter gets on the edge of a cliff, you know, and, and he's looking, and the big monster's coming behind him, and he's looking, and you're thinking to yourself, now, some way, somehow, he's going to magically be able to fly. Right? Because you automatically figure you know what's going to happen. Your mind will kind of suggest to you what's going to happen. Well, I kind of was thinking about what the Lord told me about this message, and I was thinking about it almost like it was a, a sci-fi movie. And I saw the floodwaters coming in, just rushing in from all sides. And all of a sudden, the Lord said, and here I am. I'm going to raise my standard. And as he did, I saw the ground, just a patch of ground right around me, just about four foot across all the way around, suddenly just go straight up in the air. And there I was, 
God didn't build a wall to hold the waters back. He just lifted me up higher. He just said, as long if you'll if you'll start out on higher ground to begin with, then you won't have that far to go when the floodwaters come. There's a lot of churches today, when the floodwaters come, when persecution comes, and when the tribulation comes, I'm going to tell you, they're going to be wiped out. They're going to be utterly wiped out. And God said, but if you build your city on a hill like I told you, you're the light of the world. Build your city on a hill like I told you. And if you'll do that, guess what? When the floodwaters come, they're not even going to affect you to begin with. And if they get too close, I'll just cause the ground beneath you to rise. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? Amen. Praise God and amen. Would you stand with me? Praise the Lord. For all the preliminaries tonight, remember that old song? <coughs> uh, um, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table and a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. That's my prayer today. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I made up my mind, Jesus, we're not going to run to the valley. We're going to run for the hills. Amen. We're, gonna, we're not going to walk. We're going to run to get on higher ground, to be in a place where we're thinking like God thinks and acting like God acts and doing like the Lord wants us to do so that we can be the kind of church God wants us to be, which is the salt of the earth. Amen. Master, we love you tonight. We thank you, God, for this service. We thank you, Lord, for your word. As simple a message as this has been, we ask, God, that you would allow this word to find its way into the heart of every hearer. Help us, God, to bear in mind these simple truths. Lord, that when the enemy comes against us, you're able to cause the ground beneath our feet to rise. Lord, in order to lift us up above the torments of the enemy. And Master, today we just praise you and we thank you, God, for a true understanding of the term standard. Lord, we're not the ones who raise the standard. You're the one who raises the standard. You're the one who raises the bar. You're the one who sets the rules. And Master, today your standard is when someone is overtaken, we are to restore them. That's your standard. That's why we as your church do things differently than the world does things. They cut people loose. They, they leave them to die. We don't do that, Lord, because we're not the world. We're the church. Master, help us, God, to take these simple thoughts into our heart, to contemplate and consider them, Lord. Let them bring forth fruit unto righteousness for your name's sake. For we ask it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God and amen. Well, you're dismissed tonight. In Jesus' name, go in peace.